What'd you say, Briley? Yeah, so it's two compounds. This is just extra, just as a review. All right. So two compounds, and they react together to form two new compounds. Go ahead. All right, I told you it's a double replacement. For extra practice, guys, predict the products and balance the equation here. Somewhere in your notes. You can do it at the bottom of page 7 in your pack where you have some space. Right here, sodium. You split them up. Sodium is going to go with nitrate. Hydroxide is going to go with ammonium. So we should have NaNO3 plus NH4OH. Right? That's what you should have for your products. We're going to be doing a lot of practice. Don't worry about it. No big deal. All right. It's been a while since we've done this. But again, go back and watch Unit 7 all right, that are on the channel there as a review. And I'm telling you, folks, if you don't put that time in, don't expect to do so hot next week on your test if you don't put that time in. Okay. So double replacement we're going to be looking at. But what we're going to look for, folks, what we're going to be using is what are called the solubility rules. And that was the song that I played. You can go back and rewatch it. It's in that playlist if you want to listen to it again. For those of you taking AP next year, you have to have these memorized next year. Okay? For us in this class, you have them on your reference packet, folks. Flip to the middle page of your reference packet where those guidelines for predicting products were and look right up above it. All right? Here you go. You have the solubility rules given to you. They are in your reference packet. So again, those of you taking AP, you may want to start working on memorizing them because you're going to need them next year. All right. But for those of you not, you have them given to you. You have to know how to apply them, and that's the big piece. You may end up memorizing a lot of them anyway, just the way that they are and how much we will use them. All right. But they are here for you, and you'll be given those on your test as well as your final exam. So take a look, guys. Soluble. We have one side that is soluble and one side that is insoluble. What does soluble mean? What? Dissolvable, folks. All right, they are able to dissolve. Able to dissolve. So insoluble means what? Yeah, they are not able to dissolve. Now, what are our states of matter that we've used in this class? Solid, liquid, and gas. Well, there's another one, folks. Plasma. Not plasma. All right. It's not plasma. What's another state of matter that we've talked about? What would you say? Aqueous, folks. What does aqueous mean? Solution. Well, what is a solution? Ah, there's vocab, which, by the way, vocab is due tomorrow. It's a mixture of what? Lipids? Liquid and lipids? No, fats have nothing to do with it, all right? Nope. When's your vocab quiz, guys? Should have wrote it down. Nope. Ellie, what is an, a solution? All right, two or more substances in a single phase. They, a solution consists of what? Two What two parts? Solute and a solvent, all right? Solute is what? What's being dissolved? Solvent is what's doing the, sol the dissolving, which is called the medium that's doing the dissolving, okay? So, guys, the way I remember it is you, the solute is what you put into the solvent to get it to dissolve. The solute is what you put into the solvent to get it to dissolve, all right? Also, another way to remember, guys, this just hit me. Solvent has a V in it. Dissolve, that's what's doing the dissolving. Maybe that helps you find some way that works for you. You've got to know what a solution is. All right, so here, guys, we have our four states of matter. Soluble, if something is soluble, that means it has what state of matter, do you think? Nope, nope. Aqueous, guys, the whole purpose of me saying it. All right, if it's able to dissolve, its state of matter will be the aqueous state of matter. All right? 
when we write reactions in this unit and from here on out the rest of the school year, you have to have your states of matter every single substance. Right? It has to be with every single substance. If not, you're going to lose points. Now, if it's not able to dissolve, what do you think, what state of matter do you think it's going to have? Could be solid or gas, but it's going to be one, really, because it's insoluble, so it's not able to dissolve. Nope. Nope. It's going to be a solid, guys. All right? Insoluble it means it's not able to dissolve. It means it forms a solid something. A solid what? We've used the term before. Precipitate. Forms a solid precipitate. Forms a solid precipitate. See all this review, folks, that's coming out here in this unit. Math review. Naming review. Vocab. Reaction review. It's all coming back. So here we go. How do we use these? That's the big question. So when we take a look at our solubility rules, guys, you've got two different columns as you can see. You've got a soluble column. You have an insoluble column. Soluble, everything is listed there. So those things that are listed there mean what state of matter they will dissolve and what state of matter will they have? Aqueous or aqueous, all right? Tomato, tomato. You'll hear it pronounced both ways. Shh. Folks, if you're talking and stuff while we're doing this, you're going to miss out. And this stuff can be very confusing. So if you look at each bullet point, when you're given your compounds, okay, you're going to go through, you're going to look for a piece. Most of the things listed on here, guys, are what? Cations or anions? If you take a look at those, most of them listed there are what? Nitrate, acetate, anions, guys. They are polyatomics. A lot of them are polyatomics, and most, all of our polyatomics except for one are what? Negative. They're negative. What's the only one that's not negative? Ammonium. Ammonium is the only one that is not negative. So, guys, most of them are going to be anions that are on this list. Nitrate, acetate. So, when you're in a compound, look for your anion first. That typically will be something that's written on one of these rules. It'll make more sense after I explain it. We start doing some practice. All right? So, stick with me here. But look at your anion first and see if it's up there. <clears throat> if not, then look at your, an your cation, and it may be up there. So nitrate, acetate, ammonium, all compounds that contain nitrate, acetate, or ammonium, they are all soluble, meaning they're always going to be aqueous. Anything that has a group one element in there, because it says group one salt, what is a salt? No, NaCl is an example of a salt, but it's not. That's not the definition of a salt. A salt is a what? This is review again. It's any ionic compound. Any ionic compound, guys. So sodium chloride, that's the typical example. It's the poster child of what you think of when you think of salt, because it's the one we use the most, table salt. <clears throat> you know, if I threw sodium chloride at you, that's a salt. Ah, funny joke. See, right? It's hilarious. All right. Guys, any ionic compound. So anytime you see a group one element, it's a salt. It's a salt. If I throw it at you, it's a salt. No. Anyway. Folks, anytime you have any group one element. So if you see a group one element in any compound, you know right away it's aqueous. It's soluble. All chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except when they are with silver, lead, or mercury one. So if you have any compound that has chloride in it, bromide, or iodide, as long as the cation is not silver, lead, or mercury one, it's going to be soluble. If it's silver, lead, or mercury one, what do you think that's going to be? Insoluble, guys. So over here on the left-hand side, exceptions here are insoluble, meaning they're going to be a solid state of matter. Does that make sense? You with me? If I flip over here to the right-hand side where we're talking about insoluble, guys, what are exceptions going to be over here? Nope. Over there to the right, just think about insoluble. When you, 
when you see exceptions on the insoluble list, what state of matter are they going to be? Yeah, they're going to be aqueous. More with that in a minute. Okay. So, continuing on the soluble side, all fluorides. Anytime you see fluorine, it's going to be soluble unless it's paired with unless it's paired with group 2, lead 2, or iron 3. So, yeah, folks, you've got to know how to figure out the charge of those transition metals. Again, a review for unit 5. That is a, back on the channel. You can go and rewatch that. All sulfates are soluble except when they're with calcium, strontium, barium, mercury, lead 2, or silver. Right, so this is why there's a lot going on here. You've got, you don't have to memorize them in this class. You have them, you've got to know how to use this chart, how to use the table. On the flip side, let's go over to where it says insoluble. So if something is insoluble, what state of matter will it be? It'll be a solid, meaning it's a solid precipitate. So all carbonates and phosphates are going to be insoluble, except when they're with group one or ammonium. Think about it, guys. You've seen a, a, um, a carbonate that's a precipitate. You guys made one in this class. Chalk. When you made chalk, what color was it when you made it? It was a white solid precipitate, and you filtered it out because it formed a solid precipitate. It was calcium carbonate. If it was sodium carbonate, that's group one, it would be soluble. But because it was calcium, a different group, it was insoluble. So that's what I mean, guys, right here. These exceptions on the insoluble side, they are aqueous. Everything that's not an exception is going to be a solid state of matter when we go through and identify them. Anything that's an exception will be aqueous. All hydroxides are insoluble, except group one, and then strontium, barium, and ammonium. Because remember, we already said over here to the left, all ammonium compounds, folks, Every single ammonium compound is going to be soluble. We also said every group one element is going to be soluble. Notice that every single exception here on the insoluble side has group one in it. All oxides are insoluble unless they're paired with group one. Every other element that's got oxygen at the end is going to be um, insoluble unless it's a group one element. All sulfides are insoluble except if it's group one, group two, or ammonium. So, folks, if you really look at it and make the connection over here on the insoluble side, right, the exceptions here are ammonium. Well, look back over here to the soluble ones. All ammonium compounds, all group one compounds, they are all soluble. So, notice that every single exception has those two in there. So, if you, you don't have to memorize everything. Those of you taking AP, you don't have to worry about memorizing every little thing. Look at the connections that you can make. All right? Every time you see ammonium, every time you see group one, they're always soluble. The other ones, those are the ones you got to look out for. Yeah, I just realized that too. Um, I don't know why it's not listed there, guys, but what Ellie said was this one does not have ammonium here, even though it should. All right, even though it should. I don't, I'm not, I, what I, it what jumps out in my mind, Ellie, is I don't think that ammonium really forms any oxides, ammonium oxide. It could. I'll look do some more research about that, but I don't know why it's not listed there. Right now, assume that ammonium is going to be that way unless I see something else. All right. So, guys, I can explain it. I can talk till I'm blue in the face all day. It doesn't mean anything to you. So we're going to jump in and do some practice here. We're going to take it piece by piece, step by step. All right. So just a couple of things. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. Uh-huh. Uh, wow. Do you guys remember this? When we did this in class, I did this demo for you back when we did reactions. I took two clear liquids and I mixed them together and they formed a yellow precipitate. Do you remember that or are you just saying that to appease me? Not elephant toothpaste. That was a different reaction. It was a decomposition reaction. All right. Well, it's fine if you don't. We did do that. Moving on. We're going to use our solubility rules here, guys, to determine if they are soluble or insoluble. If it's soluble, you'll put an S. If it's insoluble, you'll put an I. So let's take a look at the first one. NaC2H3O2. What is the name of that compound? Mm, yeah, sodium. There we go. Acetate, folks. It's one of them you had to have memorized. So if we go back and look at our solubility rules, 
I'm going to look for my anion first. Oh, look, acetate's right here. All acetates are what? Soluble. Also, group one elements, which sodium is a part of, they are always what? There we go. Soluble. This is what we're doing, guys. We're using those rules to determine if they are soluble or insoluble. Okay, so find it because it's there. It's a different order. My apologies, but roll with it. K3PO4, potassium, right? What group is potassium in? Group one. All group one elements are what? Soluble. Lithium sulfate. All group one elements are what? Soluble. Soluble. Guys, go through. You're going to go through and do the rest in whatever order you have them there. It doesn't matter if they're mine or not. Use your solubility rules to determine if they're soluble. Insoluble, guys. If you take a look, all carbonates are insoluble unless they're with group one or ammonium. <clears throat> so that's an insoluble compound. Barium hydroxide. It's going to be soluble because if we take a look, if we go back to our... Um, pieces here. Hydroxide is insoluble except barium is one of the exceptions. All right, so that is the process of how you go and use those. NaCl, you guys should know this one right off the bat. That's soluble because we mix salt and water. I've done that for you guys several times this year. You guys have probably done it yourselves. Silver chloride, insoluble. Now, this is lead something iodide. You have to be able to determine what the charge is on the lead because it could be an exception. If we take a look at the rules, all right, all iodides, all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble except, well, actually, we don't need to know the rule here because it doesn't matter what lead charge you have, guys. Anytime you have lead with iodide, it's going to be what? Insoluble. All right. So sometimes the charge does matter. All right, sometimes it doesn't. Magnesium bromide, soluble. soluble. HNO3, soluble. that's soluble, guys. How do you know that's soluble right off the bat? Okay, it's nitrate. What's another way? First group, okay. What's another way? What is HNO3, folks? It's an acid, guys. It's nitric acid. All of your acids are soluble because think about what form they're in. They're in that quote unquote liquid form, but it's really aqueous. Everything that we're doing, looking at the solubility, looking at reaction prediction and the types, it's all leading us up to net ionic equations that we're going to start <coughs> shortly. All right, so right here, folks, I believe that you have these questions there, do you? Do you guys already do this? Go through, identify which compounds are soluble in water. So the first question is you're circling the ones that are soluble. The second one, you're circling the ones that are insoluble. Go ahead and take some time to do that. Take a look here. <clears throat> Rubidium hydroxide, is that soluble or insoluble? Soluble. <coughs> Chromium carbonate, insoluble. Lead to chloride. That doesn't sound too confident there. It is insoluble, guys. If we take a look back here at our solubility rules, okay? Chloride. All chlorides, <clears throat> bromides, and iodides are soluble except when paired with silver and lead and mercury one. So that one would be insoluble. All right? TII, titanium iodide. Soluble. All iodides are. Titanium is not one of the exceptions. Barium sulfide. That is, which? I hear both. Let's take a look back. All right, if I go back and take a look. So we have sulfide. All sulfides are insoluble except group one. Group two, barium is part of group two. It is an exception to the rule, folks. Therefore, it's going to be soluble. And then potassium acetate, that's going to be soluble as well. Now, the right, my, well, what's right for me, it's, le it's the next one for you guys. Now we're identifying the ones that are insoluble. I'm going to skip over that first one for now. Barium hydroxide, that would be? That's soluble, so you wouldn't circle that one. Lead to iodide, that is insoluble. That one is circled. 
Calcium sulfate. Insoluble. Potassium sulfite. Soluble. Now, sulfite's not listed there, guys, but potassium is what? Group 1. We know that all group 1 salts are soluble. And the last one, ammonium phosphate. It's got ammonium in it, which means it's soluble. Now, I skipped over the first one, guys, because what's different about this one? It's ammonia, not ammonium. And it's also a what? A gas, folks. Think about an example of where you know a gas is mixed with a liquid. What did you say, Ellie? Soda, right? Does the gas stay mixed in there? No, it doesn't, guys. So that's going to make it what? Insoluble, guys. Gases under pressure can be forced to be in liquids, in solutions, but when you take that pressure away, they are no longer, they don't, they no longer stay in there. So if you see a gas, it's going to be insoluble. Questions on those questions? All right. So we're going to start talking about our first type of net ionic equation today. It's called the dissolution of solids. What does that sound like? Dissolution. What do you think we're going to be doing here? Dissolving, dissolving guys. It's the dissolving of solids. All right, the dissolving of solids. This is the easiest net ionic equation reaction to write. We're going to write a net ionic, net ionic equation. Any of you guys have jobs? Yeah, I do. Do you ever have a paycheck? Yes. All right, you guys ever look and read your paycheck? No. Anybody ever look at a paycheck? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's there's a couple different pays. You've got gross pay and net pay. Oh, yeah. Right? Office. Have a way to talk about this here, right? What's net done? They take out what? Taxes, insurance, medical stuff, all that kind of nonsense, right? So, guys, we're doing the same idea here. Net ionic equation is only showing what is active in a reaction. Not all ions will take part in the reaction. All right? So we're writing a net ionic equation that's showing what is active. What a dissolution of solids is doing, guys, it's breaking down or dissolving into simple. So what we're doing here is we're just splitting into the individual ions. Okay? We're taking it step by step. We'll get into other full net ionics later on this week, probably tomorrow after our quiz. All right? But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. So here's our first example. I have a solid, all right, solid barium chloride. So I'm going to just break this down into its ions. Well, what technique have I tried to get you guys to use all year? Crisscross is one. We're not going to use that here, though. Draw the line, folks. This is where the drawing of the line really comes into play. If you're in that habit already, net ionic equations will be a whole lot easier. If not, they may be challenging for you. So where am I going to draw my line to split it up? After BA and before CL. So now I'm going to write my ions over here to the right. What's the charge on barium? Look at your, look at your reference bags. Look at your periodic tables. Barium is what? 2 plus. Plus, what's the charge on chlorine? 1 minus. So now we are not done. If you put that, you're going to lose points. Because it says, what do we have to have? Balanced equation. Is this balanced? No. How do I balance it? Put a 2 in front of CL. Okay. Am I done yet? No. No, because what do I have on my board that you may not have in your notes? You have to write the states of matter, guys. If we're dissolving barium chloride, what do you think the states of matter of my barium ion and my chloride ion are going to be? Aqueous. Aqueous, guys. When you're dissolving them, their states of matter now become aqueous. If you don't have the charges, if you don't have it balanced, if you don't have the state of matter, you're losing points. Each one of those things I just listed is a different point. Balance is one point. State of matter is a point. Ions are a point. Because, again, we're writing net what? Net ionic, which means what do they have? They have to have charges, guys, because they have to be ions. So there are ions in that equation. Let's look at another example. Na3, PO4. Sam. Right. So, guys, Sam brings up a great point. I'm glad he asked this. For Cl over there on the right, it's not Cl2. Because do you have chlorine anymore over there as a product? What is Cl minus? It's not chlorine, right? It's 
Chloride. What's the purpose of Brinkloff, guys? They bond to get to the stable number. When it brings in that extra electron from barium, it's now stable, so it's no longer chlorine and it no longer needs the Brinkelhoff. So yes, guys, these ions, the Brinkelhoff ones, when they are ions, they do not have a subscript of two. All right, it's a big key point because they are no longer an element. They are an ion, so they are stable. They, don't, they no longer need to bond with another one of the atoms. All right, your homework is to finish the practice there of all those breaking up at the bottom of page 8 in your packet. Break those up. You also have a quiz tomorrow and vocab is due tomorrow. You have a problem set due tomorrow night at midnight.